All right, kiddos, let's get to work. I'm gonna uh, throw in the dark colors first. I'm just gonna go in with the green that's uh, not really the darkest dark green. Like, uh, maybe it'll show, I don't know. I don't know, something like that. And I'm gonna thin it out because I'm gonna be painting over it. I'd, <clears throat> I'd rather like some of these marks be uh, a little bit transparent. Uh, it's just, the feel of the thing. Um, I can come back with darks, I can come back with lights, and painting it thin at first will leave me the opportunity to create, even if I don't, if I think I got it thicker than I want, then you can wipe away, drop your stuff. Um, really wanna just hint at, uh, I can flick, these are what these flats are really good for. By the way, you can flick them out uh, and you can draw with them, like individual, cut across, flick them out again, just to give you a variety. You don't have to do every single one that you see. It's more about, and I'll keep saying this, it's more about the feel. It's always about the feel. Let's make a feel of a palm tree, all right? So I'm basically just blocking this in with this color. That's all I'm doing. Things that can happen is if, uh, is if you're going, you can have a clean brush come in. Like if you wanted to lighten up some areas, you can already kind of come in and lighten it up. Like I don't, it's so thin right now, like you don't need to lighten up too many areas. Like I wouldn't need to do that at all, but I'm just saying if you mess up. Cause it's, it's easy to lose your place when you're having fun just slapping around the paint. Like a champ, like a boss. Really just trying to get some tones, some values down. If I squint my eyes, this is dark. If I open them up, obviously this is a lot darker. It doesn't bother me right now. I'm not, I'm not worried about any of that. I'm trying to just get something that, and we don't want this to be like too in your face. Although it's one of our main, if you squint your eyes, it's this huge shape, right? And it's so dark. We need to make it somewhat interesting, but lay back into the space. Because what we really want are these lamps to pop, this light to pop, these lime greens to pop in the back and everything to lead back. Ooh. If you imagine a Nike swoosh, imagine it right there. Ooh. There's millions of ways to start a painting, millions of ways in between to finish. We're just doing one right now. <clears throat> and I know you'll differ from me as you go along and we uh, keep going on this, but um, right now, the, there's times where if I were to do this painting a different day, I might start differently, you know, like, um, there's not always just one way to just start and finish a painting, but I want y'all to learn how to do it on your own or to have more tools in your basket. If you see me mess up, how do I correct it? How do you correct your mess ups? How do you uh, think about starting? You have to have things in play a little bit.
or either you're going to be lost at the get-go. All right, <clears throat> let's move on. Things I do want. I do want thicker paint in the foreground, maybe thinner paint in the background, but obviously thicker paint in my highlights as well. So like I might get thick paint here and it'll get thinner as I go, maybe. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's, uh, let's see if I can do something with this brush. Uh, it's just a uh, filbert. And I'm gonna go into this color. Do I like that color? I do obviously have the other peachy color that I had too. And we can, I might even do a little more, you can mix it while it's on the canvas, right? Like that's it's always allowed. That's what I like to do. But mix a little bit, not quite as much of the uh, cooler color that I had. When I'm talking about that, I'm talking about this color versus this color. Those are the colors I'm using. I'm gonna be losing my line, but I sorta of know where it is, right? Go back into the warmer color. Maybe hit that up here. If you have a color on your brush and it's anywhere else, like, and you know kind of where it is, then you can hit it. Like, I feel like that color is there. Do I see it anywhere else? I don't know. I could like, uh, I could see it a little bit. I didn't find that cross street. So cross street would be Talking about where the street, cross street. Um, shadow, shadow, shadow. Up. Bang, 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 blah, blah, blah. Cross street. Cross street could be there. That'll work. Still, um, Still got my ver vanishing point right there. And why did I try to find that cross street? Oh, because of the color I had on my brush. There's like some peach and stuff in the back. Like you could still use it. You could even get it warmer slightly. You could even slightly get it warmer. Maybe going in with uh, some yellow in this color. I don't know if that, yeah, showing. But like there's some of that like warmer tones in the back from a building that's uh, farther away peeking through the trees could throw that in there even some of this color could even be used in like some of this warmth that's the same color I mixed for some of this warmth so you see how like you can have that color out and repurpose that color and reuse it And I can go over that color with a darker color again. The more you go over, or the more strokes you do over something that you've already painted, the more that those colors will bleed in together. If I just have a, if I load up my brush and go down one smooth stroke, that color will lay down it won't lay down if you don't do that it'll just be picked up mushed together with the other colors and then all of a sudden you're getting slop instead of some pristine colors all right so let me let me keep going with the building colors and where i see Make sure your brushes are clean if they're not. Um,
So you can even cross the lines, you can blur them. I do want this kind of sharp. I don't need it to be the sharpest thing ever. I don't need it to be a sharp, sharp edge. We want to go back in with a synthetic brush and try to find some, um, this, this line again. Although I just painted on top of it. Uh, let's see what I can get out of it. So I can tell by the stroke that I grab. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go, it's just a little too brown. It's not like anything interesting. Sometimes you can put down an interesting color and then come back and dull it down while you're mix. It's basically just mixing on the canvas, but um, and you want to try to get these straight. These are vertical, so make sure that you have them vertical. Um, you don't want them lean in too much to the left or to the right. It's okay to be off. That's fine, but uh, just do the best you can. Nobody needs a ruler, but you will see me, like I have my hand right here and my knees right here. I'm sitting in a, a higher chair on this easel and I will rest my knee and I'll sometimes just like be able to sturdy my elbow just like this so I can get a straighter line. A lot of people use, you know, those mall sticks, which is basically a broom handle and they'll like, they'll lay it, they'll adjust it. Like they'll tap it on the top. And obviously you need to be better if I had my easel thing down, but like you can tap it up on the top. You can rest your hand. I don't think this is nece this isn't necessary. It kind of loses, uh, I feel like you lose a lot of energy like when you start to like, try to do stuff like this. But if you're making, it's all about how you apply the strike too. Like I can have this down and I can use it, but I can plot, apply an energetic stroke, it doesn't have to be perfect, that will uh, create energy for me not looking for a stale rigid line i want something that's moving i want i want life we don't want a photograph we want life we want movement we want something that a photograph or even real life can't capture boom all right that's why people love painting and paintings along the way Like if you, if I don't like what I just did, like I can always come back in, come grab my, and always touch up that edge, boom. But see how it's a little bit warmer and then it goes off. The image kind of does that a little bit. But those are some little golden nuggets. Use the mall stick or any straight edge that you can just line up broom handle, um, whatever, whatever you, uh, have available. You don't have to buy one. You can just use what you got. Uh, this next one. Just trying to find it with this brush. It might be time to Get a new brush if I'm doing trying to do these uh, thinner lines. Keep going. Might even uh, make another pink. That's sort of like what I have, maybe just a little bit darker, 
and I'm able to come in, hint at the window. The window comes up to the window, like it comes up higher than when I drew it just because it's, I didn't know where it was when I started. But I can keep hinting at it. Keep mixing on canvas, trying to get these lines. And all of a sudden, like, a lot of this part's almost done. Like, I can keep coming in with my peach. It does get a little more um, lavender base. There's a shadow, a strong shadow around in there. Maybe we should hit that in. I would hit that in before I start. Uh, Get more pink for the building. Right, so I was using a thicker brush over here, thinner now. Um, I even get something that has a better edge. I'm gonna go back create a little bit of it's more of a darker purple the next couple windows I'm talking about windows right now um, right, that's a window and then so these continually get smaller I have to keep that in my head right and I have that line that goes up from here like I could, uh, then you might want to switch colors. Like it doesn't, your lines don't have to be the same color. It can be brown and can go in with purple, you can mix some of the building color back into it. Um, this is orange and bluish and purple, so like, and then let's do another one. We got, let's just do a couple more. Like, you don't even have to make them, you can even hint at them and they'll, they'll feel better because it'll go off and it'll make it go off into space. So like, as long as my, it's not as thick, it'll travel back. Um, some of this peach stuff and this um, ornamental work, like in columns and white, uh, if I kind of see that color, I can kind of hint at it. Otherwise, I'm not really worried about it at this moment. But some, um, I'm gonna clean off my bristle brush that's a filbert, doesn't matter what it is. I'm gonna go into like uh, the darker blue. And I'm just gonna hint at some of the outlying like circle areas just a little bit this is a little trick you could even go you know you could outline the whole thing but you don't have to
What this does is it kind of gives uh, your area a little halo, a little workspace, and it'll make the sky brighter. It'll make a make you feel like uh, there's foliage in the back. If you look at some, the more paintings you look at, there are some that have this, and even pictures. Like if you, if you squint your eyes, like you'll be able to see like some of this like darker blue around some of this stuff. Doesn't have to be the whole thing. This is just a little trick. This is just a little um, something for you to think about. All right, so one of the things, my tree trunk goes straight up, right? Well, why do I have an air hole right here? It needs to be on the outside of it, so it needs to be here, and then work its way out, which I hadn't had, I didn't have that because of my drawing. But you gotta always, wherever you are, try to, I know it's a lot of mind concentration and stuff, but you gotta try to re, uh, figure out where you are, what you're doing, why are you doing it? All right, so now I'm gonna come back in with a thicker brush and hit the white. All right, find the edge of my building. Could even be lighter than that. I'm even trying to hit or miss around that blue a little bit. And this is a bigger brush, so if I see some bigger air holes, I'll come in and hit the bigger air holes. But otherwise, there's no need to at this moment. Um, I might hit the air holes again with a smaller brush, but not right now. Um, so I really wanna to try to find basically the negative shape. So the white area or the sky area, let me try to find that over in here. can always come back with dark and come back over the light. It's not bothering me if uh, my edge is messed up or I made my initial like green too far down. I'm not really worried. So now my stuff's kind of getting A little more uh, defined. And you can see how that blue plays off the light blue and it helps the transition and to something really stark and dark and sharp lines into a smoother transition to the sky. It's using a darker version of the sky to come in and maybe outline a little bit. It's just a food for thought. You don't have to do it. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do. Art's whatever you want to do anyway. So. Um, like even if I wanted to, you know, try to push that thought process a little more, I could. come back I'm going to be coming back with greens anyway and lighter versions so that's fine with me um I'm gonna stop the video here and let you chew on that for a little bit good luck guys